Number nine, aqueous hydrogen fluoride, hydrofluoric acid, is used to etch glass and to analyze minerals for their silicon content. Hydrogen fluoride will also react with sand, which is silicon dioxide. Letter A, write an equation for the reaction of solid silicon dioxide with hydrofluoric acid to yield gaseous silicon tetrafluoride and liquid water. Okay, so I'll put A over here. We have to write a equation. And remember, every equation that we write, we have to make sure that it's balanced. So what are we reacting here? It looks like we have a reaction between solid silicon dioxide and hydrofluoric acid, right? This is reacting with this. So I know that silicon dioxide is reacting with, plus the addition of them together, hydrofluoric acid, hydrofluoric acid, and it will yield, right? To yield just means that you're producing or you're making, which is the arrow sign when we write balance equations. So this all will yield gaseous silicon tetrafluoride. So that's one of my uh, compounds on my product side. I will make silicon tetrafluoride and literally plus liquid water. So we'll just say water. So here's the breakdown of what reaction I have to make in terms of words, but now we just have to write the formulas. So this is like chapter two, you know, knowing how to make formulas, right? The first one, silicon dioxide, right? Di in chemistry means two. So silicon on the periodic table is Si. And then dioxide, how many oxygens do you have? You have two of them. So if this compound would be SiO2. I do not do crisscrossing method here because this is not a ionic compound. It's a covalent compound. They're both nonmetals. And once I see that I have the words di or tri or tetra, remember, it's the call it as you see it method. You don't have to do any crisscrossing. You just state how many there are given by the name. So I have SiO2. Now they tell me that silicon dioxide is a solid. So I'm just going to say solid plus hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is the same name. So here it is right over here. Hydrofluoric acid is the same as hydrogen fluoride. So we're dealing with an acid here. And remember, all acids have a hydrogen in the front right? So if I wanted to do the crisscross method here, which you can, um, we would have H being a plus one and fluoric, right? Hydrogen fluoride, they mean the same exact thing. That means that you have fluorine, right? And usually fluorine on the periodic table is a negative one charge. So if H is a positive and F is a minus, right? Plus one and minus one, they will cancel out, right? They're the same charge, but just different. Uh, they're the same number, but different uh, signs, right? One's positive, one's negative. So it would just be H, F. So that's this guy. Now, this is also a one of your acids that you probably should memorize. It goes under the naming of hydro blank ick acid. Whenever you see hydro blank ick acids so like hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, you're always going to be taking the H and then the element that is here. So like in this case, it was minus one for fluorine. But if it was hydrobromic acid, it would be Br minus and then it would be HBr. So I'll just leave that up here just for you guys. Um, now they tell us that hydrofluoric acid was aqueous. So, uh, we need to write a AQ here and yield. We're going to produce silicon tetrafluoride and water silicon tetrafluoride. I see the word tetra in here. So this is covalent bonding. Remember tetra means four. 
So now I have a compound that has a silicon in it, which is SI. And now I have four fluorines. Tetrafluoride is four fluorines, so SIF4. And they tell me that that was a gas. They said gaseous silicon tetrafluoride. So I know that this is a gas plus liquid water. We know what water is, right? Water is H2O. So I say H2O. And they said it was a liquid. So I'm just going to put a L here for liquid. I have my formula, but now I just have to balance it, right? So we have our equation. But now let's just make sure that we have all of our elements balanced. So let's just try to see if we could pick out um, elements that look a little off on the reactants on the product side. So for example, I go straight to this fluorine. Now it doesn't really matter who you start off with, you're still going to get the same answer. But I see that I have four fluorines here, right? There's four fluorines. But how many fluorines are there on the reactant side? Well, there's only one. So how am I going to uh, balance it out? I need a coefficient, right? You can only add coefficients once you're done writing your equation. And what times one will get me four? Oh, four. So I know that I have to have a four in front of here. That will balance the fluorines. Now let's see. This four also tells me that I now have four hydrogens. How many hydrogens do I have on this side? Well, it's H2, right? So I have two hydrogens here. I have four hydrogens over here. That means that I need a number here. Two times what will give me four? Oh, two times two. So now that balances. And let's just see what else. Now this tells me that I have two oxygens on my product side. Oh, but that's okay because it's I have an O2. So I have two oxygens. And then I have one silicon and one silicon. So that balances. And now we have our final answer for A. This is the balanced equation. So guys, what do you think? This one was fun. Let me know in the comments what you think. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want. I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Have an awesome day. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. Bye-bye.